Welcome to Doc Talks Detox. I'm Dr. Caitlin, and you're joining me in the middle of a seven part series. That's right, I am breaking down the seven specific lymph nodes that everybody should learn how to locate and properly clear because guess what? If they get congested, we're ultimately holding on to waste. Yep. Our lymphatic system is our waste or our sewage system of the body. So what is the lymph node we're talking about today? Well, today is the cisterna Kylie. And this is a big one. Like I said, this is video number five though. So if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, please go back and watch the other four videos because I'm literally teaching these lymph nodes step by step in order. Meaning I started with one and that's the first one you do. Then number two, then number three, then number four, and here we are at number five. And the reason I'm breaking this up is I want to make it as simple and as easy for you to implement because when it's simple and it's easy, you're more likely to do it. And then the more likely you are to do it, the more successful you're going to be. And the more successful you are, the better you're going to feel. So today we are talking about the Cisterna Kylie. Now this is a biggie. Like I mentioned before, the Cisterna Kylie, when there's congestion in this area, there are a lot of symptoms, a lot of things that we can experience because the Cisterna Cisterna Kylie is actually responsible for draining all of the lymphatic fluid from our internal organs, from our abdomen, and from both legs. It's a lot of fluid. That's a ton of fluid. And so when there's congestion in that area, we can experience a lot of different symptoms, ranging from bloating. And bloating can be all the time to after you eat, to, you know, menstrual cramps, and menstrual cramps is another one. It can also relate to like digestive issues, whether it be constipation, diarrhea, fluctuating between it, cramping in the GI tract. It can also be things like dry skin. Dry skin has a variety of different causes, some because of liver, some because of gut, some because of drainage. And so when the cisterna Kylie is congested, we could have very dry skin. It could also be like, we could also experience things like fluid retention in our abdomen. We can be puffy, swollen, or fluid retention in our legs. It can also be things like estrogen dominance. Because remember, lymphatic fluid helps distribute progesterone. So if we have a lot of congestion, our body's not able to spread the progesterone around, thereby causing estrogen to go high. Now, again, remember, this is just one cause. There's many different causes. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of what could be going on. Not to mention, and I'm just going to list off a couple, rattle them off right now. It could be food sensitivities. It could be that you get sick easy. It could be that when you get sick, you stay sick for a really long time. It could be unexplained weight gain, the inability to lose it despite what you're doing. Like there's a lot of different things. So if you have any of these, not to mention depression, anxiety, stay tuned. I want you to actually go through and start doing some of these things because I've been told hundreds upon hundreds of times that when individuals start to open up their lymphatic system, a lot of these symptoms, they might not go away like this, but they ease up, they get better, and they ultimately feel like a different person. So what we're gonna do with the sister and Kylie is this one is a unique one because most of the other ones that I've taught and will teach the next two are a little bit more superficial. This one is actually quite deep. So deep that it's close to our spine. Yep, that means we're not gonna be massaging this lymph node. The cisterna Kylie is not one that we directly massage, but there's two ways that you can stimulate the cisterna Kylie. And I'm gonna show you one very specific one and then I'm gonna mention the other one at the end. So make sure you stay tuned. What we're gonna do is first to locate it and then the hand position. So let's talk about the hand position and then we'll talk about how to locate it. So when we're doing the cisterna Kylie, we're gonna be using our ring finger and our middle finger. And I like to have them together kind of like this. I have all my other fingers up. If you guys know American Sign Language, this would be I love you. So use your I love you hands. But we're going to be using the ring and middle finger. And ultimately, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a J motion with those fingers. So it doesn't matter which hand you use you're ultimately gonna be doing a J motion with your other fingers pointing up. Kind of like, rock on, woo, or I love you. Okay, so with that J motion, we're gonna come in and up, in 
and up. It's gonna make more sense when I show you exactly where to go. Okay, now to locate it. We are going to have one hand where we're gonna close our middle fingers. So our index, middle, and ring finger, we're gonna bring it down and we're gonna stretch our pinky and thumb out, okay? This is the hand that we're gonna use once we find where to stick our thumb, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna scooch on back. You are going to locate your sternum. So how we're gonna do that, the easiest way is, my hands are nice and cold, we're gonna find our rib cage and we're gonna walk up our rib cage until our hand meets right at our sternal notch. What you're gonna do is with this hand, you're gonna take your thumb place it right where your hands met when you walked up your rib cage, and then the pinky is gonna go in your belly button, okay? So we're gonna take this hand, stick our thumb on our sternum and our pinky in our belly button. And then with the other hand in the I love you, we're going to take our middle and ring finger and stick it in the middle. So we're just gonna go right in the middle remove the hand that was finding the location. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and up, in and up, in and up. We're not going very deep. We're only going maybe an inch in, and then we're coming up, okay? So in and up. Now, this one is going to be more tender. This one's always a little bit more tender. Now, when it's really, really tender, what you gotta note is there very well could be congestion in that area. Remember, inflammation causes discomfort or pain. And what causes inflammation is trauma, fluid retention, congestion, stagnation. And so guess what? Congested lymph is really, it is a trauma because it's waste products breaking things down, driving up inflammation. The other thing is double check where you are. Also, make sure you're not digging in. The goal is not to like try and touch our spinal column, okay? We're not trying to touch our spine. We're literally just going in and up. So super gentle, okay? How many times you might ask? Well, we're gonna go back to the 10 to 50 different times based on how much congestion you have, what else is going on, how long it's been there, all of those things. Now I know what you might be thinking. Well, what if I'm a larger individual? Do I have to go in deeper? No. Nope, because no matter how large or small you are, we're never actually going to be physically touching the cisterna chile. It's just, wait, it's in there and that hurts. Okay. What our goal is, is to activate the muscles and everything else around the cisterna chile to influence it to drain. That's the whole point, okay? It's ultimately like stimulating that area to get a reflex and that reflex is helping the cisterna chile drain. So you do need to do this regularly, okay? Again, I'm gonna highly encourage you to do all of these lymph nodes in order at least once a day. And the more congested you are, the higher the number of repetitions you're, you should do, okay? Now, with that being said, I did mention that there was one other means of stimulating the cisterna chile for proper lymphatic drainage. And that method is diaphragmatic breathing. So if you don't belly breathe, if you're a shallow chest breather, you are going to have a lot more congestion in this area, a hundred percent. So start by, you know, slowly manually moving that lymphatic fluid and then work on diaphragmatic breathing. If you guys want me to give you more instructions on how to do diaphragmatic breathing, let me know in the comments and I'll happily go through you know, a couple exercises and create some videos to make it easier for you to implement. All right, make sure you guys implement videos one, two, three, and four, now five, and then come on back for video number six because we're gonna talk specifically about how to drain the lower abdomen and the leg. This is an important one, and this is one that I get asked all the time. What do I do? How do I do this one? So make sure you come back after you practice the cisterna Kylie. Thanks for being here and happy draining.